bigger the army, the scarier. It's forever, dude, throughout history. Think of any army throughout history. Imagine them gay. Gay Nazis? Just when you thought those guys couldn't look any sharper. They... <laughs> gay Vikings? Gay Vikings, dude. You're just some villager looking out on the shoreline, see a bunch of Viking longships coming. You're like, oh no, it's the Vikings. They're gonna rape our wives and daughters. Then they pull up their fucking rainbow flag on their boat and you're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, that's way worse. My roommate, his girlfriend played college volleyball. So I'm very excited to like shit on volleyball whenever I can. So I get in there and I was like, yo, volleyball is fucking, that's a weird culture. Get them fucking shorts. Get them gym shorts. Dude. The shorts they're wearing is gross. And she was like, no, we need those shorts for speed on the court. And I was like, uh, I, I know that's not true. I watched the NBA. <laughs> None of you are moving as fast as like a ref. And those guys are wearing like slacks, <laughs> dress shoes for some reason. She was like, no, we need those shorts. The tight shorts, they're essential. She compared them to like a helmet in football. I was like, I know they're not essential because I Googled the, uh, the Special Olympics volleyball team. <laughs> All of a sudden those shorts weren't so essential for them. <laughs> What's that about? How baggy do you think they're, they looked like the fucking N1 mixtape out there. <laughs> Offensively baggy is how I would describe all of their attires. I'm not discounting the fact it's hard for families. It is. I've witnessed it firsthand. It's difficult. It's very scary at first. And then you quickly realize that's easily the only good family member we have. That's the only good person I know. They're the bros, dude. They're the perfect bro. They love two things, dude. They love John Cena. Across the board, dude. You see one of these dudes out in public, hit him with a phone. <laughs> They're gonna give it back. They love it. And they love tits. Dudes with Down syndrome love tits, and it's a very uncomfortable truth for a lot of people, and I'm not sure why. Tits rule. John Cena rules. It's kind of the two coolest things. <laughs> I found this out from hanging out with my girlfriend. Uh, I didn't know that women, women watch porn now. Shame. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'll say this about that. I think women watching porn is having a negative effect on all of us. You know what I mean? We can't both come into the bedroom thinking we can fuck like that. <laughs> you fuck someone lately? It's just everyone thinks they're in a porn, dude. Every, one, every time you fuck a lady, she's like, Ugh. every dude's like, yeah, put your in the bed. <laughs> everyone, what are we doing? Stop. <laughs> belly to belly is pretty good. It feels the same. <laughs> everyone thinks they're a porn star. You're not, dude. Those are professionals. You're not good enough to fuck like that. First off, if you're a dude and you're good at sex, that's gay. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, dude. That's a girl quality. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad. When, I'm saying it was bad enough already when it was just men watching porn, coming into the bedroom with fucking ideas from shit that, you know what I mean? It was bad enough when it was just me coming in there just... I watched a squirt tutorial earlier. <laughs> She's like, I can't squirt. It's like, you all can squirt, actually. <laughs> Some girl just forces herself to pee to get you to stop doing it. She's like, you did it, baby. Like, yeah, obviously I did it. <laughs> now, you can't, you can't do the cool moves you see in porn. Just have regular, just do regular. You don't have to, you ever try them? You ever think you can? You ever try, like, cum in a girl's face? Not as cool. They're a lot less receptive in real life. That's a, that whole process is a fucking nightmare, dude. It's a disaster. It's just you, the girl you love is down there. You've been begging her for three months to try this. Finally, she's like, yeah, you can do it. You're like, yes! It's gonna be just like the videos I watch every day. That's my favorite part. Now you get to do it. You think it's gonna be awesome. It's not. It's just you up there, alone. It's cold. <laughs> she's out, she's being nice. She's like, are you okay? Now you can feel it. You're like, all right, here it comes. This is gonna be awesome. She's gonna love this. And as soon as it hits them. They freeze, dude. Once it's on them, they like don't know how to move. The, you know what I mean? Like you ever put like socks on a cat? 
And then you feel bad because the cum's out of you and you realize what you've done. <laughs> you feel terrible. You gotta fucking, you gotta pick her up off the ground. It's like the same energy as like when a toddler falls. You're like, come here, get up. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. <laughs> we'll never do it again. <laughs> saying fucking Down syndrome rules. <laughs> I'm saying it wrong. I'm not. I'm not discounting the fact it's hard for families. It is. I've witnessed it firsthand. It's difficult. It's fucking, it's scary. It's very scary at first. And then you quickly realize that's easily the only good family member we have. That's the only good person I know. They're the bros, dude. They're the perfect bro. They, they love two things, dude. They love John Cena. Across the board, dude. You see one of these dudes out in public, hit him with a phone. <laughs> They're gonna give it back. They love it. And they love tits. <laughs> Dudes with Down syndrome love tits, and it's a very uncomfortable truth for a lot of people. And I'm not sure why. Tits rule. John Cena rules. It's kind of the two coolest things. <laughs> Look, <clears throat> this joke's probably not gonna make it, but <laughs> here's what I, all right, hear this one out. I'm gonna try. If you see it, just know I won an argument. Because <laughs> I think it's good, but all right. Dudes with Down syndrome love women so much that like, I've never been a believer of being gay is a choice. But I will say, every dude I know that can't think fucking loves pussy. <laughs> I guess it's a keeper. <laughs> Looks probably not gonna make it, but. <laughs> All right, hear this one out. Dudes with Down syndrome love women so much. I've never been a believer of being gay is a choice, but I will say, every dude I know that can't think fucking loves pussy. <laughs> All right, All right. I guess it's a keeper. <laughs> I'm not a Republican yet, but I will say, I don't care if they arrest him. If he loses the primary, let him debate, dude. If he gets arrested, Hannibal Lecter, him out to the fuck. Just... Here's my idea, final debate of the year. I have one Republican candidate, one Democrat. You're like, all right, fellas, surprise third guest tonight. Fucking stone cold music, the glass shatters. He walks out. They're both gay. <laughs> I think it is actually important to see how the candidates handle that type of pressure of debating with Trump. Every debate, he just bullied whoever was up there. The only one who did pretty good in the debates against him was Biden, just because he had no fucking idea what was being said, <laughs> which actually helped him. That worked out for him. Because Trump's whole thing is he tries to get in the other guy's head. Can't get in Joe's head. <laughs> Joe's not in there. Good luck, dude. Biden is Trump's kryptonite in a debate. Trump tries to drag the other guy into like a shit-talking contest. He can't get Biden. He, every debate, he's trying so hard, and Biden's just... <laughs> he tries, he's just, you're a loser. Your son did crack. Biden's just, <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, damn, dude, that's actually a pretty good comeback. You might win this thing. Every year, Hooters would sponsor our one basketball tournament. All right, so every year, Hooters would bring like three or four waitresses, and they would present like a big cardboard check donation to the Special Olympics. As soon as the girls entered the gym, the game changed <laughs> entirely, dude. It went from like hugs and sportsmanship to just like dudes got competitive, like very competitive. <laughs> Fucking ripping down rebounds, just hitting layups. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the game, there'd be a hug line between the waitresses and the players. And yeah, that went about exactly, exactly how you would imagine that went. We had to break out the fucking jaws of life, dude. My boys are ragdoll on those young sluts. <laughs> and I'm not knocking the, the, the players. They were totally in the right. The girls were hot. The waitresses, like every year, I would sneak into the hug line myself. <laughs> That's the thing about these countries. I was just in England, Scotland, Ireland, Australia. No black people. And I know what you're thinking. No. <laughs> No, you need black people. You need black people to keep the whites in check. The last thing you want is a whole island of whites that think they're the coolest people on earth. It's a disaster. That's how you end up with Conor McGregor's walking around like, ah, -ba 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 -ba. It's like, shut up, dude. The foreign whites are out of control. <laughs> American whites, we're humble. We know we're not the coolest guys around. It's the foreign whites, dude. Is there, yeah, yes! <laughs> Preach, brother! <laughs> yeah. For real though, there's a reason every good NBA player that's white is from another country. The audacity to think you could play in that league, dude. <laughs> the fucking arrogance. Every white dude in America saw a black kid dunk in like eighth grade and was just like, oh, all right. <laughs>
There goes that dream. We'll just set picks for the next four years. <laughs> just box out hard as hell. You ever see an old lady fall? Like, my grandma fell. She was trying to get the hose from behind her house, and she fell behind a bush. Should I act it out? Like, uh, <laughs> if you want. But it looked like the wild, the, uh, well, this is going to distract me, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're doing it, I was like, it looked like uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, she fell, and then her feet were just sticking out from a bush. And she laid there for like two hours. It was the summer. Whoa, wait, she... <laughs> She was Wizard hot. of Oz did where she was No, just... like just her feet were sticking out from under a bush in her backyard. Oh, And then wow. a neighbor's kid found her. Which is very funny. Because if you don't have life alert and you're old, you just have to yell. But it's very faint if <laughs> you're, you're older. There, be like, Help! <laughs> Isn't that funny? You guys don't think it's funny to have to lay there? I don't know if you know this. The war in the Middle East is just on the internet. The whole fucking thing. Every dude out there on both sides was wearing GoPros the entire time. Like you can watch it. We watched like three hours of the war in Iraq. And after the first hour, I found myself starting to cheer, not cheer, but like <laughs> relate. I felt like I could relate more to the monkey bars guys. You know what I mean? They were a little more my speed. You ever wonder how you would do out there? Watch those guys. Those are just normal fucking dudes. Second shots are fired. There's no game plan. Everyone's like, oh shit. <laughs> Very relatable, guns jamming try to fire a rocket, it goes straight fucking backwards. <laughs> They're very, they look like me, trying to fire a gun. Their feet move when they shoot. <laughs> very relatable. They also have never won. They, ne they got fucked up every single time. Bad. They would blow up like one truck every five months. They'd be just as surprised as everybody. <laughs> Shit finally worked out. You could hear it in their voice. Someone would blow up, they'd be like, Oh! Hello! Yeah, dude, that's a human reaction. That's relatable. That's what I would do if I saw a fucking explosion. I'd go, oh! I was talking earlier. I'm not, I'm not a Republican yet, but I will say, I just want to see, like, for real, I don't care if they arrest him. If he loses the primary, I don't get, let him debate, dude. Let him debate. All I want to see is him debate. Dude. I don't care. Hannibal, yo, if he, if he gets arrested, Hannibal Lecter him out to the fuck. Just, Bring him on stage. Here's my idea, final debate of the year. I have one Republican candidate, one Democrat. Be like, all right, fellas, surprise third guest tonight. <laughs> fucking stone cold music, the glass shatters. He walks out, just, they're both gay. <laughs> I mean, see how they handle that? I think it is actually important to see how the candidates handle that type of pressure of debating with Trump, dude, because so far none of them have been able to handle it. He literally, every debate, he just bullied whoever was up there. The only one who did pretty good in the debates against him was Biden, just because he had no fucking idea what was being said, <laughs> which, which actually helped him. That worked out for him. Because Trump's whole thing is he tries to get in the other guy's head, dude. You can't get in Joe's head. <laughs> Joe's not in there. Good luck, dude. Biden, Biden is Trump's kryptonite in a debate. He's literally perfect. He can't beat him. Because Trump's whole... Trump tries to drag the other guy into like a shit-talking contest where he will win. He will win at that. He can't get Biden. He tries. Every, every debate, he's trying so hard, and Biden's just... <laughs> That's it, though. He tries. He just... You're a loser. Your son did crack. And Biden's just... What? <laughs> he's like... He's like, damn, dude, that's actually a pretty good comeback. You might win this thing. I miss it. I miss the speeches with Trump. You remember that? We used, to get, we used to get five speeches a day when he was in office. Anytime you turn on the TV, that guy was giving another fucking speech. Live, dude. Be in front of a helicopter, scream, calling a lady a lesbian or something. Like, this is going to be a tough one to defend at work. But I'm gonna. <laughs> Now it's sad. Now with Biden, we get like one speech every three months. And it's hard. He's like falls and shit. It's hard to watch. It's sad. I'm rooting for the guy. Obviously, I want things to go well. But it's hard to watch him do anything. Anytime I watch Biden do anything, I get the same feeling as like, you ever go to a friend's house and they have like a 16-year-old dog and it walks in the room? <laughs> and you got to do that whole like, oh, hey, there he is. 
Josh, look at him. He's looking great. <laughs> My favorite thing about Biden is any anytime Biden finishes a speech, he transforms into a Roomba. Just... <laughs> I miss it. I miss the Trump speeches. Trump gave what I think was probably one of the greatest speeches of world leaders given. You know, it's got to be up there with like Churchill, <laughs> Gettysburg Address. <laughs> anyway, for real though, it was my favorite speech I've ever seen a president give. It was the night, it was the night the United States killed the leader of ISIS. Trump comes out of the Situation Room at like midnight in the White House and he walks down that fucking tunnel like he's, and gives a press conference like he's giving a post-game NBA <laughs> just killed a guy press conference. He walks up in front of the entire world at midnight and just goes, Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. <laughs> That's all him, dude. <laughs> I didn't change one word of that. That's what he opened with. And then he did 40 minutes. The speech is 40 minutes for no reason. It wasn't a prepared speech. He freestyled 40 straight. Not even a speech, just mean shit talk for 40. The meanest shit talk you've ever heard in front of the whole world. Abu. We could hear him crying. I said, Abu, don't cry. Abu. Let me tell you something. Abu cried. He cried quite a bit. I wouldn't have cried. <laughs> Cry baby back daddy, that's what we were all calling. <laughs> Look, I love everything about that speech. I love it. I love thinking about Trump in the Situation Room, surrounded by generals watching a live, watching Special Forces, watching those cocksucking Navy SEALs. <laughs> those mother, if I was in there, I'd be like, get out of that, boo, run. They're great lovers, don't let them get you. Ah, they got him. <laughs> ah, they're making him squirt. <laughs> no! No! How can you do this? <laughs> That's what we should do. Instead of, you know, instead of Zero Dark Thirty killing these guys, we should break in and have our special forces fucking whack them off in their own bed. That sends a pretty serious message, dude. Can you imagine that? Just four Navy SEALs holding your arms and legs. You're the only dude without night vision. No! <laughs> uh. Queer. <laughs> fly away on a helicopter. You just got jerked off in your own bed. You fucking jerked me off! You make me do cum? You know what I mean? There you go. Yeah. I just love, I love, I love thinking about Trump in the Situation Room, watching a live military operation. He's the only dude in the room that wasn't military. He must have been the only dude watching it that was like, oh! <laughs> like, you could tell he's never seen it before by the fucking speech. The speech sounded like a guy just trying to tell you some shit he saw. Just, a lot of guys would knock on the front door, not these guys, not our guys. 
Not our guys. Our guys went through the wall. They blew up his wall. <laughs> and they used dogs. Beautiful dogs. <laughs> Beautiful dogs is the funniest detail. Because it's true. They actually did use... It was the Army Rangers, and they used dogs, because they were afraid Al Baghdadi was going to be wearing a suicide vest, so they killed him with dogs and a robot. <laughs> and then made fun of him for crying. <laughs> it's like, dude, let that guy cry. That's the scariest death I've ever heard of. That dude was laying in his bed in the middle of the night, his wall exploded. Fucking 10 dogs and a robot broke into his house. Dude, 10 dogs wearing helmets and goggles broke into his house. The Paw Patrol, the actual Paw Patrol. <laughs> All right, dude, you guys have been so great. Dudes with Down syndrome love women so much that like, I've never been a believer of being gay is a choice. But I will say, every dude I know that can't think fucking loves pussy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, I guess it's a keeper. <laughs> We're all adults. We all agree the Special Olympics is a good, it's a good program. It's great. I just feel like the guy who came up with it had to be like a real risk taker. <laughs> Some guy in a board meeting, like, I got an idea. We should be racing these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> like, what'd you say? Like, fucking you know, town over said they had the fastest ones. <laughs> so we settle it, you know? I'm not making fun of the Olympians. The concept is wild. It's a wild, like if your best friend invented the Special Olympics and told you about it first, you'd be like, don't ever tell anybody that. <laughs> Who the fuck were you going to tell that to? What are you doing? Pole vault? <laughs> you can't do the cool moves you see in porn. Just do regular. You ever try them? You ever think you can? You ever try, like, cum in a girl's face? They're a lot less receptive in real life. <laughs> that whole process is a fucking nightmare, dude. It's a disaster. It's just you, the girl you love is down there. You've been begging her for three months to try this. Finally, she's like, yeah, you can do it. You're like, yes! It's going to be just like the videos I watch every day. That's my favorite part. Now you get to do it. You think it's going to be awesome. It's not. It's just you up there, alone. It's cold. <laughs> She's being nice. She's like, are you okay? Now you can feel it. You're like, all right, here it comes. This is going to be awesome. She's going to love this. And as soon as it hits them, they freeze. And then once it's on them, they like don't know how to move. You know what I mean? Like you ever put like socks on a cat? And then you feel bad because the comes out of you and you realize what you've done feel terrible. You got to fucking pick her up off the ground. It's like the same energy as like when a toddler falls. You're like, come here, get up. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. We'll never do it again. Uh, I've heard of astrology and belly button rings. I feel like those go hand the girls in hand. Still, yeah, they do. The girls, are you guys still getting belly button rings? I don't know. I haven't fucked a whore lately. I know I said retarded there a couple times. My bad on that. I'm not trying to give myself a pass on being able to use that word, but I will say, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, I do have family members with Down syndrome. It almost got me up. I dodged it, but it nicked me, it nicked me. Bit of a day walker myself. My Uncle Danny sneaks grilled cheese sandwiches into restaurants just in case they don't serve grilled cheese sandwiches. I don't know where he's getting these fucking things. It's the best, it's the best. You'll be out to dinner with him, you look across the table, you see him sneaking at grilled cheese. Just Yo, yo, where'd you get that cheese, Danny? His dad's with him. He's like, that fucker, he's been making him at night. I know he is. I'm not making him at night, Dad. Then he'll look at you and be like, I'm making him at night. <laughs> I think my favorite part of the year was I, uh, I got to watch my dad watch the news. He's a Fox News guy. Fox News dad, that's a good fucking dad. Can you imagine if you had a fucking MSNBC dad? Some guy every night at dinner, like, we need to start focusing on renewable energy. It's like, ew, dude, I didn't know dad was gay. <laughs> Talking to me about solar panels like a fucking lady. He might have had her straight as hell, dude. We fucking hate the environment. That's how straight we are. All we talk about is eating pussy and fracking. Like every Fox News dad, my dad watches Fox every night until he can't. They watch every night until they get so angry they have to go to bed. My dad will watch for like two hours and then out of nowhere he'll just stand up and be like, fucking Mr. Potato Heads? Trance, I'm going to bed. This world's going to hell. Fox News is basically black church for old white dudes. You know what I mean? Like, literally everything they say, my dad just sits there like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, preach, Tucker. 
Every once in a while, he gets hit with the Holy Spirit while he's watching it. The Holy Ghost visits him. He's just like, oh, Lord, build a wall. Can I get a wall? White people used to be cool in America. The height of white people being cool was us going, we're like, man. That was as cool as we got. We're like, man, see? And then the day white people stopped being cool, it was Jackie Robinson's first game. You can look it up, dude. You can find it. You can find the radio call from that game online. You can hear the exact moment white people stop being cool. You can hear the announcers. They still got there like, man. Welcome to Chicago, where the White Sox take on the Brooklyn Dodgers. We all had cool white nicknames. Like, up at the mound is old Curly. He's a 47-year-old alcoholic. He's the greatest athlete alive. Runs a six-second, 40-yard dash. Fastest man alive, they say. Then it happened, dude. And Jackie came up to the plate. You can hear the announcers like, meh. <laughs> Coming up to the plate is young Codboy from Brooklyn. No way he can hit Curly's pitch. Here comes the pitch. Fuck, home run. All right. <laughs> Jackie hit the ball so hard he knocked that voice out of all the whites. Not one of us has talked like that since. Dude, one swing of the bat. We're like, meh. <clears throat> all right, yeah, that was pretty good. That was good. It's time for us to focus on computers. <laughs> Autistic kids, they're like cats. A little skittish. You're not sure if they like you at all. Down syndrome or dogs? They're the dogs, dude. You get home, you get home from somewhere, they're like, where the f have you been? Dude, I got so much to show you. This is gonna be the best day. Tell it, ask a Down syndrome kid, do you wanna go for a walk? But like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, throw a ball. <laughs> throw a ball. <laughs> I'll get on Twitter and the first tweet I see will be someone from back home that's just like, fucking Colin Kaepernick better stand up. <laughs> like this tweet if you support the police. Share it if you're not gay. All right, I'm fucking I'm sharing. <laughs> and then the next post is just one of my new woke white friends that's just like, I'm not racist. That's it. Every day for the last year, just a different white person popping up. Like, look at me. Look at this article I shared to my Instagram story. I'm not racist, right? It's like, all right. You sure? So I don't know if you know this, like being racist isn't like a yes or no thing. You know what I mean? It's not like you have it or you don't have it. Like being racist is more, it's like being hungry, you know? It's like, yeah, you're not right now. It's like, yeah, you're not hungry right now, but a cheeseburger could cut you off on the highway. We're hungry all day. <laughs> the cheeseburger is Jewish in that joke. No, no, I'm kidding. I do this thing, it's not a good thing, but whenever I'm dating a girl, I always talk shit on her exes. It's not a good look, women don't respect it. it kinda makes me look like a bitch. I like it. I, <laughs> I can't stop doing it. And normally it's easy, normally it's like, what's your ex do? He's a fucking substitute teacher. It's weird, he wants to hang out with kids, like, that bad. You know, I, like, this one's tough. This is a tough ex to make fun of. It's when I'm walking around the apartment all day, just pff, fucking Navy SEALs. They're kind of pussies, if you really think about it. You know what I mean? Like using night vision, sneaking up on guys. That's a fucking coward's way to fight, dude. You know who's actually brave? Al-Qaeda. That takes courage and bravery. Just in pajamas, throwing rocks at tanks. Heroic shit, dude. Just you and your boys going out. In flip-flops, you're all gonna get fucked up. Dude. For real, though, it was my favorite speech I've ever seen a president give. It was the night the United States killed the leader of ISIS, Trump comes out of the Situation Room at like midnight and gives a press conference, like he's giving a post-game NBA <laughs> just killed a guy press conference. He goes, Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog and a fucking dude. I didn't change one word of that. That's what he opened with. And then he did 40 minutes. The speech is 40 minutes for no reason. It wasn't a prepared speech. He freestyled 40 straight. Not even a speech, just mean shit talk for 40... The meanest shit talk you've ever heard in front of the whole world. Abu. We could hear him crying, I said. Abu, don't cry. Abu. Let me tell you something. Abu cried. He cried quite a bit. I wouldn't have cried. <laughs> cry baby back daddy. That's what we were all calling. <laughs> like as big as racism is in America, football. There's a Disney movie, Remember the Titans, dedicated to what I just told you. The whole point of that, dude, that was one high school football season. Remember the Titans was like, it was eight weeks. That whole town went from like centuries of like, don't let them in our school, to just like, oh shit, the high school team's 4-0? Those are my brothers. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is if you want to get rights in America, you just got to put together a good football team. You know what I mean? 
if the transgenders got together and put together just a fucking hard nose, run it down your throat ball club. If the trans is just three yards in a cloud of dust of transgenders. If the trans, if the trans community could just somehow upset Alabama, everybody down there tomorrow would be like, those are some tough bitches, actually. I <laughs> Anytime I go to another country, as soon as I get out of the airport and start like driving around, I'm just like, Dude, this is your fucking country, dude. Other countries suck. Dude. America is number one, dude. It's not even close. It's official. I've been to like three other countries. It's official. And other countries hate it too. They hate that we're number one. You ever tell them? You ever go to another country and tell them we're number one? Swim up to like a pool bar, just. And you know, we're number one. They hate it, dude. They try to bring up bullshit to bring us down. They're like, what about all the mass shootings you guys have all the time? It's like, at least we're not gay. <laughs> You know? So there's really not a good comeback to that because that's a pretty serious problem. And we're the only country doing that. We're not making any adjustments. <laughs> None. What, are we going to give up our guns like a bunch of fucking gay guys? Yeah, right, dude. No, we're just going to have shootings all the time. Yeah. Australian accent's one of those accents that's funny every single time. You could be in the middle of a fucking tragedy if you heard an Australian accent, you'd still be like... <laughs> like if there was like an Australian guy in the office on 9-11, I was, I was like, oh fuck, look out! <laughs> like, oh no, there's another one, get down! Ah oh, fuck, it's hot up here, you're gonna have to jump out! No! <laughs> that reminds me, I was thinking about the first time like Congress had to come up with age of consent. That had to be, like, the powdered wigs and stuff. That had to be a rough day for the fellas. It's like some guy coming up first, like, from Rhode Island, 12. And everyone's like, ew, ew. No, dude. I, I don't know. Why'd I have to go first on this one? It's like the hardest one to go first on. Sexually, I have to, I have to follow a fucking Navy SEAL. They never quit until the job's done, dude. That's their whole thing. I quit a lot, all right? <laughs> The job's done when I'm tired, which is usually pretty early into the mission. <laughs> My arms start shaking pretty early. They give out. Next thing you know, we're having belly-to-belly -belly missionary. <laughs> Just hunched over, breathing in her ear like a pug for five minutes. <laughs> Just coughing. Coughing during sex is funny. Just <clears throat> you guys know belly-to-belly -belly missionary, dude. Don't fucking... I saw this crowd, dude. I see you, boy, a lot of belly belly tonight, dude. This guy's hunched over. Just... <sighs> you don't even think about that noise you're making in that poor woman's ear. Every woman in this room has heard that noise. You've never thought it. The only way I can describe it is like, you ever lay down and a dog starts sniffing your ear? That's what it sounds like. Every just... <laughs> you know what's fucked up? <laughs> I used to kind of cheer a little for the predators. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I didn't want them to get laid. I mean, if, if, if it's a football game, they, they are the away team. <laughs> <laughs> They're going into hostile territory. But they also, like, that show, if you watch that show, it's, it's not, look, I think pedophiles are bad. <laughs> Let me lead with that. He's running for office next <laughs> yeah. year, by the way. Let me just, just, just say, I'm pedophiles are say bad. say this, but if you watch that show again now, they're just trapping, like, very like mentally handicapped guys and Indians. That's all they're getting. They're getting me and Akash. 